Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So some fascinating stuff we want to share with you guys. Some of you guys may be aware of this and some may not. Mm, yep. It's information for everybody, though. Yeah. And, you know, we have some amazing 3, 4 a.m. discussions that sometimes get forgotten and sometimes they are remembered. Yes. Yeah, so this is one of those days where we, we remember we do so the nature of the universe many believe is that of a fractal what is a fractal it's a never-ending pattern fractals are infinitely complex patterns that are self-similar across different scales they're created by repeating a simple process over and over an ongoing feedback loop driven by recursion fractals are images of dynamic systems Hmm, the picture of chaos. Well, chaos, ordo ab chaos, right? Yeah. <laughs> Order comes out of chaos. Geometrically, they exist in between our familiar dimensions. Fractal patterns are extremely familiar since nature is full of fractals. For instance, trees, rivers, coastlines, mountains, clouds, seashells, hurricanes, etc. Abse abstract fractals, such as the Mandelbrot set, can be generated by a computer calculating a simple equation over and over and over. Just think about it. Think of everything that can be brought into being by just zeros and ones. Uh, it sure can, and that's a really, it's kind of an interesting thought because it's simple yet so complex. <clears throat> So we wanted to share this with you because we've touched on this before and, you know, I was going to bring over a video I did a while ago from Evolutionary onto EE Arts uh, because many of you guys probably haven't seen it if you're new to the channel, but I figure I would touch on it also giving um, some stuff that we've realized just, you know, ourselves in the past year or two as everything is always changing. Here, you, I mean, you could see and we've talked about uh, you know, the neural network of a brain and, and the pattern of stars out there and the energetic flow between the stars. We see it very, very similar with the way rivers are and the vascular network. You know, there are so many different things we can see fractal-wise, patterns that just keep repeating themselves. You know, and also when I was little and even still now, instinctively I always felt we were just in one big brain. Yeah, we are in the mind of God, so to speak. And, you know, uh, it's it's just so fascinating to get into. And yet we have our own mind. And yet, as it is written, ye are gods. Well, yeah, because there's billions and trillions of beings inside you that are living in your, you know, universe, the universe that you are. Yes, so that makes you very important for many beings. And, you know, this is showing the, on the right there, you could see it a little more clearly, the fact that the human energy field is a torus. And a torus, you can think of it as a donut shape. So when we do standing meditation in Qigong, which is called Zhang Zhuang, we are drawing in the life force from the feet, and we're also drawing it in from the crown. We are consciously drawing it in, in the shape of a torus and circulating it around us. And yeah, it's constantly moving. Like when I look at Mike's, there's always, it's always something different. I mean, slightly certain things stay the same, but then so many different things show up. It's, it's fascinating. Because our emotions control everything and they control our, our field. And when we see here on the left, the field shrinks when you're in fear mm -hmm. and it expands when we're in love. When we're in a state of love, it starts to encompass all those things around us. We start to merge more with, uh, you know, the other beautiful forms of consciousness that exist all around us. Fear contracts, love expands. There was uh, actually a tweet by um, Marco Rubio uh, yesterday that I responded to, and he was quoting a biblical passage that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And so I question that because as, as we have spoken about so much here, I feel there's serious misinformation that's been plugged into the scriptures. As, as we know, you know, all the Gnostic ones were torched, burned, eradicated. And the Gnostic ones talk more clearly about this and about what consciousness is. And so, you know, how could that be true when fear disconnects us from everything around us, including source. It, love expands, and, and love and fear are opposites. 
Yeah, and the powers that be know this, and hence all the trauma, hence all the chaos, all the things that create, you know, really bad energy around you. They know this, so they always have to constantly be bombarding us with something to be fearful of because they don't want us to be expansive. That equals trouble. Well, because we're tapping into source, which lies within every single one. As, you know, the Christ had said, the kingdom of God lies inside you already. It's right there. It's up for you to cultivate it and realize it. And also that he, he, you know, all the things he's done, we would do greater. So how could that possibly be if he was the only one that had the type of abilities? You guys might know the magnetosphere is in decline. Well, what's the real shape of the magnetosphere? It's a torus because the energy field of the earth is the same as the energy field of a human. Uh, it's the same pattern. And we see it again and again throughout nature. We actually look at the structure of the universe. What's the structure of the universe? It's a torus. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Again, as above, so below. And if that's not a core of an apple, I don't know what to say. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, it's, it's fascinating to, to look at it, but we see these repeating uh, patterns all throughout nature. Another thing that's really fascinating to look at, as we've talked about Vishnu, and, and this is Lakshmi, Mahalakshmi, eh? and they are, well, Vishnu is the preserving force of the universe, and, and Lakshmi, you could think of her as, as the divine feminine. Now, it, in the Vedic and Hindu uh, traditions, they take smaller versions of themselves, they incarnate, they literally will incarnate in human bodies and have, and, and thus we have Rama and Sita, and we also have Krishna and Radhe. Now, the interesting part is, yes, this is Vishnu and Lakshmi coming into human form, yet they're all distinct individuals, and they're all actually still existing. Each one of them is existing. And so while Vishnu and Lakshmi, in a, in a way, in a manner of speaking, gave birth to Rama and Sita and Radhe and Krishna, right now they are all separate beings, in a sense, yet they're still all one. There's a paradox. Well, I think it's the they know that they're one and they know that they're separate. They understand the enigma that we find ourselves in here while we're down here learning and we're f having an experience of being separated. They know the mystery. They understand it. Yeah. And as we've said, you know, again, this fractal nature is just so apparent when we look at a brain cell in the universe. It is so, so apparent. And, you know, this is a, a good PDF uh, that gets into the fractal, the fractal nature of the universe as well. And there's so many that you can, you know, look into. Now, the other part that's really fascinating is, okay, so how could that be? You know, how could... How could Vishnu and Lakshmi, or any of us, you know, give birth to other beings? Well, as we've talked about, and this is from the book, How the Universe Works, which is um, basically the belief set of the Pomono shaman. So this is Native American beliefs from the Pacific Northwest. As we see, there's an oversoul, which gives birth to a source self, which gives birth to individual lives. And yet, these are all unique. Every single one of these circles is a unique being. And it doesn't mean that that being is, is gone because there is no time, ultimately. Right. You know, and, and when we get down to, you know, when we get up to the higher densities, there is no time. Time is an illusion. It's, it's an illusion so our brain could actually function. Uh, and we can function in these vehicles. And so every single one is a fractal, in, so to speak, um, containing the pattern of the original, but each one is a unique expression as well. Mm -hmm. And that's where you get into the feeling of separateness because we chose to come down here and experience ourselves as separate. But the real, the real deal is we are all one ultimately. Just having our own separate individual experience is just so beautiful. And again, I think nowadays it's very easy to see it as a, a game. You know, because as we were saying before and given the analogy um, of like you might have three games going on at one time. You might be playing chess, you know, in the room with your brother. Right. But you may also have a game going on in your, on your phone 
And then you might have the computer set up and another game going on. And so you are three distinct, you have three distinct games going on, three distinct personas going on. And, you know, they can even be concurrent at the same time. Uh, yet there's one you. Mm-hmm. Think Avatar. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Avatar is definitely a good one uh, to give as an analogy. It sure is. When I watched that movie, it's like everything fell together so nicely and comfortably. So you could kind of view, you know, Lakshmi and Vishnu as being the oversoul that's shooting out these other Mm -hmm. beings below them, other incarnations. And yet when their physical bodies are gone, they still are. Every single one of us, again, is a unique combination also of DNA. And DNA goes not just, it goes beyond the physical realms. So we are merging with other people's programs, Mm -hmm. so to speak, because it is program. It's the programming of the universe and how the universe works. And there again, the entire universe that we know is just a single cell in something bigger. This entire universe that we look out and we see, you know, countless stars, countless galaxies every single universe is just a cell in something bigger right and i think it's super important to note that how healing yourself helps you become more one with the other fractals because the powers that be know how to cause certain damages certain things to keep you separated and not you know able to be at one and it's all about self-healing healing yourself is like critical and once you do that you start working with other people and then other people start working with the planet it's just a big beautiful gift we've been given and ultimately you know what are we we're consciousness and and so when we look up at uh, any star and we just see what appears to be a blazing ball of gaseous fire plasma well you know if you were a tiny little being you know if you were able to shrink yourself down into like one millionth of your size you would look up at yourself and just see the night sky you would see all the different you know atoms in your body looking like stars uh, individuated stars but they're actually one they're actually making a, a one unit of consciousness. And there is this really fun little meditation that I like to do. And what I do, and it, it kind of helps you understand the oneness of everything. You make yourself really, really small. And you put yourself maybe on a, a leaf of a beautiful plant. And just look at how massive and how big and vast that leaf is. And then feel kind of bask in that feeling and bask in in the oneness that that gives you and hold on to that energy signature it's so healing i guess another way we could look at it is like now we've seen uh, sci-fi movies that have uh, clones Mm -hmm. you know so you could almost look at it like uh, if you were all of a sudden presented with a couple clones of you would they be you would they be in your head well, you might be able to link up with them, you know, telepathically, but yet they're distinct, but yet they're you. Yeah, yeah, you would have an understanding of sorts, you know, yep. It can be absolutely <laughs> perplexing, uh, but this is stuff to meditate on. This is stuff to really sink deep into. And I've talked to you about Taoist philosophy because that's something that I've studied a, a lot as far as getting into Qigong and medical Qigong. And so we have the Shen, which is spirit or soul, and the Hun. The Hun are our advisors, uh, so to speak. You could view the Hun as an angelic beings or super benevolent spirit guides. Uh, we are also comprised of what's called Po energy. So Po energy comes from the earth, and there's thought to be seven Po spirits in each human. Uh, so you have the Shen, which is that which is e- eternal and is experiencing this particular incarnation uh, in Taoist philosophy and thought. Uh, the Han, again, those are the benevolent angels on the shoulder, but they actually reside in your liver. Uh, you can drive them out of your liver if you drink too much, and then that can make you uh, be a little bit more uh, earthy and perhaps not under control of, by your higher self so to speak. Uh, And then the Po, there are seven of them, and they equate to the seven deadly sins, coincidentally, as well. You know, like lust and greed and all that type of thing. 
Now, when we when the physical body dies, the seven Po spirits go back to the earth. The Hun either come with us again into another incarnation, or they go their way, or they might even incarnate. You know, it, it's, it's again very interesting that each person is really a composite being of more than one beings. Oh boy, that gets into a whole can of worms. And that's another reason why when we look at Western um, theory, you know, with schizophrenia, that could be an explanation, so to speak, for, you know, cases of schizophrenia, as well as tapping into past lives and also tapping into concurrent lives with other uh other beings that are actually you, you know, co-beings. And I think this is really important to bring up for people to have an understanding of how important you really are, how your thoughts and the frequency you put out is affecting the other beings in you and around you. So the more pleasant you are, the better your thoughts are, the better everything around you is going to be. Yeah, so, you know, this is really interesting stuff. And when we look at, again, the Western system of things, it it doesn't take all this into account, and it just wants to uh, basically numb everything. That's that's their approach to everything is let's just numb it down, numb it down. You know, take away your abilities to sense these other beings in other realms and just put you on a veil of, uh, well, a veil that just keeps you away from understanding the great picture of of really what reality is and it's an amazing thing because consciousness abounds and we are not limited uh really beings at all we are expansive amazing co-creative beings that are eternal in the sense that our consciousness goes on forever And, you know, in a sense, though, we do limit ourselves because maybe we wanted to have a certain experience or delve deeper into a certain frequency. So everything has a purpose. Yeah, you know, and and it's the way that people will label things like this, quote unquote, new age in a negative sense, or they'll view it in a negative sense, but really... What they're doing is they're accepting uh, the belief system of the C A B A L or the I L L U M I N A T I, because you know, or the the you know church, so to speak, because they don't want you understanding all this. They don't want you understanding how consciousness works, how the universe works. They want you locked into a fear-based system that you're born once, you're going to be judged, and then you better do what we say, or you go into hell. Uh, you know, so that can, that enables them to control people completely in the incarnation. If you realize that you are eternal, this is just one suit you are wearing. Uh, and you've worn so many countless suits before, and you'll wear more suits again. Uh, that takes all their power away. There is no power in that. How could they control you? It's the same thing with, well, why did they destroy Gnosticism? Well, because it's all about self-realization, gnosis, which is something that is done one indru- individual at a time. It's it's the power is within you. It's up to you to realize that, to realize who and what you are. You don't need any church. You don't need any priest. You don't need to be forgiven for anything. You know, you have to forgive yourself and, and move forward instead of wallowing in all this guilt of original sin. So, you know, <laughs> Again, when they quote and talk about this as new age, as if it's something new, no, this is the ancient knowledge that was understood in Lemuria and the great civilizations of the past. It's been hidden because it takes away their power structure. It sure does. So that's why it's so important that we start to question things, you know, and not just always take the literal word, what has been written in front of us as how things truly are. Start to listen with our heart, expand your heart, listen with your heart and learn. And as I was pointing out, this is the belief system of the Pomono uh, shamans. And again, that's here in the Americas, but it is congruous with Chinese, you know, Taoist philosophy, uh, which we will find that the same core belief systems, they're everywhere when you get down to it. These these are shamanistic beliefs uh, that are inherent in people all over the globe. But again, this has been driven, driven from our minds in order to control us.
But, you know, this is the apocalypse, the time of the great unveiling. So all this is being revealed. Yes, it is indeed. So we want to thank you guys for being part of the family. Make sure you are subscribed. Thank you for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Anybody that needs to reach out to us, Cindy is catching up a little bit on her Vedic charts now. Um, still probably figure uh, maybe 10 days to two weeks to get uh, one of those done and scheduled. Uh, as each one does take like about two hours to put together or so. And then about an hour to go over. Uh, anybody needs any energy work, you know, reach out to us again at EEARTS at ProtonMail or EvolutionaryEnergyArts at gmail.com. Uh, make sure to, you know, check out our website as well, which I'll be updating hopefully later on today after we get done with our clients. Um, and it's EvolutionaryEnergyArts.com. And we love you guys. So, you know, keep up, mm -hmm. keep up, stay up, you know, and, and we won't allow ourselves to get into the fear-based reality, which allows us to be controlled. Of course, we can't have our heads in the sand when, you know, something might be coming around the bend. Mm -hmm. So we'll be aware and alert, but not in fear. That's very, very important to keep that in mind. Yes. As always, guys, God bless and namaste. God bless and namaste.